How we talk about a movie affects it in a lot of different ways, whether it's saying the visuals in the trailer are horrible, leading to lower box office earnings, or the fans of a movie being so annoying people hate on the movie to keep a balance. Things tend to be on a pendulum, and when things get too extreme one way, people push back the other way. Speaking of annoying fans, Across the Spider-Verse was a really successful movie that just came out, yet people are already starting to get tired of the fanbase, attacking anyone who draws anything the way they don't want to, or has an opinion that they personally don't like. Don't be surprised if people start randomly hating on the Spider-Verse movie by the end of the year. The dialogue around Drive is really odd. The most popular video about this movie is called The Movie Incels Love The Most, and I don't think that's really fair. People from all walks of life enjoy this movie, not just guys who can't get girlfriends. And because of that, I want to take another, more balanced look at this movie. Ryan Gosling reprises his role as a socially awkward weirdo, this time with no name. And when you look it up, Google gives him the name Driver, so I'll call him that. I really like the fact that Driver doesn't have an actual name. Driver is in a blank state, and he's pretty much just floating along with no personal identity. His apartment is a reflection of himself blank and bare with just a little lamp to work on his personal projects. He does the bare minimum in every interaction to get by, but unless he's talking to Irene, you can tell he's anxious and would rather be working on a car. The funny thing about Drive is that the movie is so engaging that you don't even really pick up on the fact that the main character doesn't have a name. Driver's relationship with Irene is really interesting to me. Irene seems to represent a light at the end of the tunnel, a chance for Driver to really live. Before Irene, Driver doesn't seem to take pleasure in many things, yet once they meet, everything Driver does is centered around Irene's happiness and safety. Irene's husband returning is a great way to throw off Driver, and it makes him snap back into the reality of his situation. At first, I was really worried that Driver and Oscar Isaac would spend the rest of the movie fighting over Irene, but thankfully nothing of the sort happens. There is a bit of a love triangle going on, but it's barely addressed. Driver is more than happy to help Standard out because in doing so he keeps Irene and her son safe. Even when Standard dies, Driver does not seem even slightly happy, even though there's no one in between him and Irene being together. The soundtrack for this movie is amazing. Johnny Jewell, who was originally slated to make the soundtrack, was replaced by Cliff Martinez, who imitated the score created by Jewell to create the 80s synth pop sound we get in the movie. No disrespect to Jewel, but I'm really glad this happened. Personally, I feel like a lot of the cult following for this movie comes from the love of the music, so changing up the sound really helped things. A Real Hero is the most iconic song on the soundtrack, and that's for good reason. The two times that it's used have a lot of thematic significance, coming in when Driver is at his highest and later on when he's at his lowest. Color is a really big thing for me. A lot of movies neglect the importance of color and how it can liven up a setting. Take this trailer for the Napoleon movie that's coming out soon. Monochromatic backgrounds with little to no contrast or standout colors. When I go to see this movie, it will be because Joaquin Phoenix is in it, not because the trailer is good. Personally, I love reading the stories about Napoleon's life, but these battles look like they won't even live up to the spectacle of Waterloo, which came out over 50 years ago. And before anyone thinks that I'm just being a hipster hating on anything modern, both the Batman and Joker manage to look absolutely amazing because their cinematographers understand how to use color. Drive uses color to the nth degree, making things look almost like a modern fantasy epic with bright lights and deep pastels. Every setting in Drive looks good because of the color, whether in the garage or in Irene's apartment. Simply put, Drive is pretty and we need more pretty movies. Earlier I brought up the association between this movie and incels. This tends to happen a lot with literally me characters. Journalists in particular tend to have a problem with these characters, acting like their mere existence will bring violence. Do incels like this movie? I'm sure some do, but to group the entire fanbase under that label seems unfair. It seems like movies that are idolized by mainly male audiences get an incel fanbase label whether there's evidence to back that claim up or not. I see nothing about Driver that would endear him to incels in particular, so really I think most people who call this an incel movie just saw one too many jokes on Letterboxd and turned their brain off. Once Standard dies, the movie is flipped on its head and you don't feel safe for more than 5 minutes at a time. I loved watching the robbery slowly get worse, starting with the suspicious car pulling in, then Standard taking too long, coming to a boiling point when Standard gets shot. 
I was pretty surprised by the fact that I felt genuinely sad for Standard. They definitely made an effort to make us invested in Standard, and it paid off, at least for me. Even when Driver gets to a place where he can hide, things only get more confusing when a news broadcast comes through claiming that there was only one person involved in the robbery and nothing was stolen. Driver escapes the motel and heads to the garage to meet with Sharon, played by Brian Cranston. I have a super unpopular opinion towards Brian Cranston, given how I love everything he touches. Sharon feels like Walter White played out to his logical conclusion, broken down and alone. I found it odd that Sharon and Driver seem to be at least a little friendly for the first hour, but their last few interactions are super hostile. Then when Driver finds Sharon dead, he seems pretty sad even though he almost killed him the day before. Driver tells Irene what happened to Standard and the two get into an elevator, leading to the driver getting into a fight and killing his attacker which makes Irene run away. I love how the scene is written, going from a sweet moment between Driver and Irene to an all out brawl, with Driver going way overboard and scaring Irene in the process. I read somewhere that this scene is meant to show us the divide between these two. The violence of the scene is nothing new to Driver, but Irene has never been in this type of situation or seen this side of Driver. Up until this point, Driver has been completely chill and laid back, but as soon as he sees a threat to Irene or her son, he kicks things into a different gear and unleashes the true version of himself. Driver's conflict with Nino and Bernie aggravates me to no end. These two idiots could have gotten all of the money if they had just let Driver go. Nino was offered a chance to just pick up the money from a location, but instead he goes out of his way to send someone to kill Driver without knowing where the money even is, despite the fact that he needs the money, and if Driver doesn't tell him where the money is, there's no point. Driver had no reason to come after Nino until Nino made himself a target. This is apparently a shrewd crime boss who has been operating for a while and he wants to expand, but he doesn't have the good sense to send more than one guy to take on Driver. Nino's death would be completely avoided by a little forethought, and it's the same with Bernie. Bernie puts up a friendly front only to stab Driver in the parking lot. I kind of get why Bernie wanted to get rid of any loose ends, but he should have brought back up at the very least. He took down Sharon easily, but Sharon was a middle-aged man with a bum leg, while Driver is a fit man in his late 20s. I did like the aspect of Driver leaving the money. That money has done him no good, and if he were to take it, he would be hunted for decades. By leaving the money and Irene, he assures his and Irene's safety and gives the both of them a fresh start. Hmm. What do you do? Drive. Drive is a great movie. I love the majority of it and I think it's a little underrated. Ryan Gosling is really good at acting as if he's never had a friend and this movie was no different. Carrie Mulligan is also really good and I don't know why I haven't seen her in more movies outside of the Leonardo DiCaprio one that make you watch in high school. The insanity of the plot juxtaposes Driver's nonchalant attitude perfectly and I think that plays into the literally me aspect of the fandom. Because Driver is a blank slate with relatable interests, it's pretty easy to see yourself in him. If you somehow made it this far and you haven't seen Drive yet, I hope this video convinced you to at least take a look and see where all the hype is coming from.